As an active duty member, your income is pretty well predetermined. I mean, yeah, you know, everywhere you PCS, BAH is gonna be a little bit different. You're gonna get occasional special hazard duty pay. We have a lucky few that are gonna get COLA pay when they're living overseas. But for the most part, your income is pretty well predetermined for better or worse. But what if I told you there was a way to earn more with very little time commitment? I'm talking about being military, being active duty, and earning passive income. Hey, I'm Stephanie Lankowski. I'm a residential real estate agent and the wife of a retired military veteran. We've been in the military. I've been a military spouse for about the last 15 years. And we now live and are retired near Eglin Air Force Base in Destin, Florida. I know you guys are so busy, you know, on active duty, the Air Force's lovely motto of, you know, work smarter, not harder. Yeah, that one didn't fool me. <laughs> anyway, I know you're so busy doing your life that you barely have time to accomplish your task and spend time with your family, much less have a side hustle. As a military spouse, I found it like super heartbreaking as I went through our military career to try to build any career of my own. And it was extremely frustrating for me to try to contribute to any financial wealth that we had as a family. So fortunately for us, we found ourselves as accidental landlords. And as such, we unwittingly learned the advantage of being military real estate investors. So it's 2022 and if you have orders to come to Eglin Air Force Base, Hurlburt Field, or Duke Field, now might be a really great opportunity for you to get into the real estate investment field. Here's why. Our local economic development professionals are predicting that Okaloosa County is in what is called, and Walton County, are in a boom year meaning we just see a ton of projected job growth, AKA thank you Department of Defense contract. We have some missile things moving down here from St. Louis, I think, don't quote me on that. Um, there's just a ton of contracting jobs coming in from all over the place. Keep that in mind for those of you close to retirement. In addition, while like the rest of the nation, like our real estate market had a, a pretty big inflation, we're at about 19% inflation um, in prices of our real estate. Listen to this. So um, rental rates went up by 31% in Okaloosa County from 2020 to 2021. That's right. So prices of houses rose by 19%, but rental rates increased by 31%. I'm telling you, somebody out there is glad that they kept that house and rented nice. it out. So it's a great time to potentially invest in real estate, but let's rewind a little bit and talk about me and our experiences. I was always in camp sell, right? When it came time to PCS and we had a home, I was always, always wanting to sell the home versus rent it out. I just didn't want the hassle. But the truth be told, like I really didn't know what all it entailed and I just really didn't care to figure out until we got stuck. So back in 2010, we got short notice PCS orders and we couldn't sell that dang house. And we ended up, you know, after a few frustrating months of, you know, about to walk out the door, decided to throw up a, a for rent sign and see how it went. And my gosh, y'all, within like an hour, we had competing offers outbidding each other even what we were asking for for rent for our house because there's just not enough rentals here anyway long story short that turned into our first rental home and a good several years later wink wink i'll tell you how many years it's been um you know we were able to fat uh, to, to cash out on that property and get a super fat check that went into our you know forever house that we're retired in now it's not that hard so moral of the story is it's not that hard to rent out your home with a little forethought, just a little bit of research and a, the right mindset. You can be active duty earning passive income as a military real estate investor. Here are five tips for military looking to rent out your home. 
So tip number one is to make a budget. Run some numbers. This I usually run away from. I hate math so much with a passion, but this is really relatively simple. You know, you're gonna account for your monthly expenses. You're gonna look for your mortgage, your taxes, your insurance, all utilities. You're gonna look for any maintenance expenses like, um, you know, in this area, a termite bond is pretty typical for almost every home to have or to have, you know, an HVAC service care um, program or homeowner's warranty. Include all those things and get a monthly expense. And once you get that monthly expense, a general number that you can use is 5%. So multiply your, your monthly number by 5% to give a cushion for maintenance, right? This is a cushion. This is a generality. Then on top of that, don't forget to include a budget for vacancies when you're looking at making a rental. You're going to have time between tenants and you're going to have to cover all of those expenses, the mortgage, insurance, taxes, and maintenance utilities. You're going to need a cushion. So you can dig a little deeper into this investment budget by using calculators or um, formulas that you find online. For instance, you have a rate of return and a return on investment calculations that you can use to decide what um, the potential is for this property to generate for you, the income it'll produce for you. So um, you can use those tools and you can use them to compare to perhaps like a stock option or maybe even what like just your simple savings account might earn for you. So step number two is to be purposeful in buying a rental home, AKA don't buy it as your dream home or home because you love it. Buy this house because the numbers work, because the location is great and it works as a rental home. You're going to be attracted to purchase a house just the same for the same reasons that a tenant would be attracted to rent it. It's in a good location. It's got a great school zone. You know, it's like walkable to Target. Um, we all love that. It's a super big bonus. But use this as a caution just from my own experience for um, saving on your bottom line. Avoid things that are going to be higher in maintenance costs like a pool or um, extensive landscaping that really bit me in the rear end. And also you may want to avoid like upscale things in the house, like hardwood floors. Those are precious. They're beautiful, but gosh, have you seen the price of wood lately? So step number three is determine if you're going to hire a professional property manager, or if you're going to do this yourself, you know, like the, the prices of rent have gone up and increased. So have we've seen the trend in property management. It used to be pretty consistent. 10% of your monthly rent was what you owed to your rental management company. And we're seeing that kind of hike up now and go between 15 and 20%, which is a pretty big chunk in your earning potential. Having a property manager is largely convenient as they're going to be advertising your property. They're going to be screening potential tenants for you. They're going to be taking in your rent. And then they're also going to be working um, your maintenance for you. That's, that's, not nothing for sure. I know a lot of people who hold a ton of rental properties generally prefer to have a property management company, but we just had a few rental homes and I found that it was relatively easy for me to do it myself. And in fact, at the end of the day, I preferred it. It cut out the middleman, felt like I was having to be just as engaged as if I were doing it all myself with management company and they were taking my money. So things you have to consider is still writing a lease and you can find a lease agreement online. I would certainly do it by state and find one that's backed by a lawyer, but it's also simple and easy just to pay one-time fee to have a property manager or a real estate agent write a lease agreement for you. Next, filling that vacancy can be a little bit daunting. Again, you can use a one time feed to have a property management agent do that for you. However, like there is such a need for rental homes right now, go on any social media or even just your word of mouth and you're going to have that property rented without even having to advertise it. I mean, Facebook spouses pages are like off the hook for rental properties and well, purchasing properties right now too. It's a great way to do it. So with a little bit of forethought, you know, um, you can manage this property yourself and save yourself a bunch of money. Um, it was a bit of a hassle, but I will tell tell you when we cashed out of those houses, it was a little bit of bomb to me for that, you know, lack of the career that I was able to build. Um, you know, just one house selling one house alone equaled out to being about three years worth of a career payment with my degree food for thought. So step number four 
is to find a good system to track your expenses for tax deductions. We made some pretty good mistakes here initially along the way and ended up hiring some tax professionals to help us sort it out, but it got sorted out. So you can make a lot of tax deductions. It's gonna save you some money. It's not a shiitake ton, but you know, a penny saved is a penny earned. So track all your expenses. And then additionally, um, don't forget to account for depreciation of your property in your taxes each year. This was news to us and unfortunately a bit of a headache for us to figure out when we went to sell our first home. Again, thank you tax professionals. So step number five is your mindset, right? I want you to adopt, you know, a Warren Buffett type of mindset. This is not a get rich fast the scheme. It's just not going to happen. This is a long-term investment. This is um, slow growing for you. So in that, don't get greedy in what you're trying to earn overnight. With that and with that mindset, for instance, you know, have reasonable rent rate, have reasonable repair agreements with your tenant. Be a generous landlord and be kind because kindness just goes so far, right? And then I want you to recognize that this slow growing natural savings account for you is going to be earning you passive income while you're active duty. Thank you for your service. Real estate is exciting, it's fun, and it can be really lucrative. Consider using PCS opportunities as a chance to expand your real estate portfolio and count yourself among the active duty passive income earners. For more information, you can watch our PCSing to Destin playlist, or you can click on the link below for a new home buyer's guide. See you next Thursday.